Welcome to Survey of Engineering. We are in our Chemical Engineering Unit and today we are going to introduce the, our spectrophotometers and help you understand how you're going to build a spectrophotometer and why we want to build one. Your portfolio questions for this video are number one, beta carotene, which is the orange color in carrots, absorbs what colors of light? And if our samples of algae are green, what color of light should we use in our spectrophotometer to have the best sensitivity? Number two, what do you need to worry about in the design of your spectrophotometer? See if you can come up with anything that is in addition to the list that we'll talk about in this video. Number three, why do we need to calibrate our, ca our spectrophotometers? Let's do a quick review of light and um, its basic wave nature. The light that we see is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, a very small part, but all of the visible light, all the colors that we see are as a result of, of this light. And the longer the wavelength, the more red the color, and the shorter the wavelength, the more blue or violet the color. The white light that we see can be refracted and or split into all of the colors of the rainbow. So let's talk about how we see color. If we're looking at radiated light, things like computer screens or LEDs, um, we see the exact wavelengths of the light that's being radiated. So you can see we have a red light on and a blue light on. So our eye would see a red light wavelength and, and blue wavelength. If we're talking about reflected uh, light, like what the colors we see in paint, we are actually seeing the wavelengths that that paint is reflecting and not seeing the wavelengths that the paint is absorbing. So for example, if we're seeing a purple color, the, the paint is reflecting blue and red and absorbing green. In the case of transmitted light or light that comes through something, like dyes in a liquid, we are seeing the light that is not absorbed by the sample. So for example, if our, our purple, if our sample is purple, we're seeing m m mainly red and blue wavelengths and the sample itself is absorbing the green. So different molecules because of the types of light they absorb and the types of light they reflect have different colors that we see. This can help us in determining um, what it is that we're looking at, what sample we have and how much of the sample um, is in our, our sample or how much of the, how, how concentrated our sample is. So here we see a couple of spectra of how much light is absorbed and what wavelength of light is absorbed by two different molecules. The one on the left is beta carotene. Again, that's the, um, the color that's responsible for the orange that we see in carrots. And because we see orange, that means that it's actually absorbing the purple, blue, and a little bit of the green wavelengths of light. On the other hand, if you look at some molecule like malachite green, because we see the greenish bluish color, that means that it is absorbing a more orange and red um, types of wavelength. So the basic idea of spectrometry, spectrometry. If we shine a light of some spectra, meaning some makeup of wavelengths through a sample, we'll get some makeup of wavelengths of light out. And it may be slightly different than what we shined in based on some reflection and refraction of light through the, the sample, but if there's, or through a non-sample, just uh, because of our spectrophotometer. Now, if we put a sample in between the light in and then sense what's out, we see something a little bit different. So it changed a little bit, and by how much did it change is what's interesting. This tells us what light our sample absorbed and how much it absorbed tells us how much of the molecules 
are in the sample or how concentrated that sample is. So by comparing the light in or the light out with no sample versus the light out with a sample, we can see what was absorbed. And that tells us something about our sample. So the basic idea of spectrometry, we need to worry about three different things. First, we need to worry about what the light source is. Um, hopefully, typically we want this to be adjustable because we want our, our light source wavelength to match well with what absorbs, what's being absorbed by our sample. Then we have our sample and we want to put that in our spectrophotometer such that the light, light will pass through our sample and into the sensor. And then we have a sensor and it should be able to sense light that is both um, emitted by our light source and uh, whatever is absorbed by our sample stage. So we re ideally want to be able to move our light source wavelength of light emitted down to the range of wavelengths that our sample is going to absorb in order to get most sensitivity in our spectrophotometer. So here's a circuit that uh, we're, you're going to be building for your spectrophotometer. We're going to be using the same RGB or RG red, green, and blue um, LEDs that we used for our electrical engineering project and the same resistors and you're going to connect the resistor to the common or the ground pin of the LED, connect that to a 9 volt battery and then the other, the positive terminal of the 9 volt battery will be connected to either red, green or blue depending on what you've, what color you've determined is the best for um, getting the most sensitivity with our green algae. That light should pass through <clears throat> the sample of our algae and be sensed by a photoresistor. This photoresistor we're going to be connecting to a multimeter to measure the resistance. And <clears throat> the greater concentration of in our sample, the higher the resistance will be of that photoresistor. So what do we care about? for the design of our spectrophotometer. These are the things that we need to be concerned about and, and designing uh, to maximize the um, light that is transmitted through the sample into the sensor. We need to worry about how the light is positioned and whether or not it's stable. Is it going to move around to change the intensity of light that goes through the sample? We need to worry about what light color we're using. We want to use a color that will be most absorbed by the sample so that it gives us the most sensitivity. We also need to worry about where our sensor is positioned. Is it in the path where the most light should reach it through the, the sample? And is it stable or is it going to move around and change how much light it, it senses? We also need to worry about any stray light coming in that will change our reading and give us noise. Um, if we get our, if we're sensing light from other sources than our, our LED. And we need to worry about our sample positioning. Is it, um, are we shining the light directly through the path of that sample, just through the width of the, the uh, little sample vial called a cuvette? Okay, so, but we're measuring resistance and we really care about the concentration of algae in our sample. So how do we get from resistance to concentration? Well, we need to do something called calibration. How are we going to calibrate our spectrophotometer? We're going to use samples that have concentrations of algae that we know. And we're going to be able to associate the resistance that we measure with concentration so that we'll be able to track the concentration and the growth of algae in our, our photobioreactors. We also need to uh, determine something, we need to be able to relate transmittance to the resistance that we measure. Now transmittance is just defined as the fraction of light that is let through or transmitted through the sample. So as you are performing your calibration, you're going to also, in addition to making measurements on 
samples with known concentrations of algae, you're going to make measurements on samples that don't let any light through or T equals zero, zero percent light through or none, and you make a measurement with um, uh, T equals one or all of the light through. Let's talk about how we're going to do this. So in order to find zero transmittance, we will use a blackout cuvette, meaning it has something black in it that won't let any light go through. We'll call this measurement R0. And this should con correspond to 0% transmittance through our, ser our sample. It, this measurement could, could be noisy, and it may differ from the measurements that your neighbors get with their spectrophotometer. So if you think about uh, what might add noise into our measurement of our R0, we could have some reflected light that's bouncing around the container into our, our sensor. <clears throat> our um, blackout cuvette may not be as black quite as we think. Um, so there, those are some things that could add noise that we need to think about as we're designing our our spectrophotometer. Now how do we find 100% transmittance? That means that we have all of the light that comes from our light source goes through uh, and into our, our sensor. What we're going to do is use a cuvette containing only clear water and we're going to assume that that's letting all of the light through from the light source to our sensor. We'll call that R1. And it should correspond to 100% transmittance through our sample. So this is the data that you're going to uh, collect as you are, after you've built your spectrophotometer and as you are calibrating it. We will talk about the calculations that you need to make uh, to to uh, properly relate resistance to concentration in another video, but you need to take down this data when you come to class after you've built your spectrophotometer. You will measure 100% um, transmittance, so this will be with a clear, a clear water sample and write down what the resistance you get for that. You'll also measure it with a black cuvette or zero transmittance sample, which will be R0 and write down the resistance that you get with that sample. And then you're going to have a table relating concentration of a sample of algae and measured resistance. And on this side, on the concentration side, you're going to write the known concentrations of the samples that we will provide for you uh, in this part of the table. And on the other side of the table, you're going to write the measured resistance that you get in your spectro spectrophotometer for each of the calibration samples. So be ready uh, to get started and, and build your spectrophotometer and uh, take down the data to calibrate it so that we can start using it to track our algae growth in our photobioreactor. See you in class.